Welcome back to this old trailer. Today we're talking about reverse osmosis water filtration in an RV or travel trailer. Um, basically, if you're traveling all around and using water all over the place, you don't know what kind of tanks or what kind of city water systems, you don't know where your water is coming from. Even if you're uh, camped out for a long time on city water, let's be honest, uh, they add fluoride, they add all kinds of stuff to water, and you have no idea what's in water, really. Um, they're talking now about pharmaceuticals that they can't filter out of the water. Um, it's very important, whether you're stationary or traveling all over, that you have some sort of filtration on at least your drinking water, okay? I like to use these three-stage canister filters. They use a uh, 10-inch canister filters, uh, but they actually make a really cool kind now where you just press a button and plug the filter cartridges up into the base. Um, I'm going to put links to both both of these kinds down in the description below. Uh, best possible price you can get on both systems. The only reason to go with the, the, the big canister style is if you're kind of a water geek like me and you want that, that arsenic and fluoride filtration and you want that silver ion filtration. Uh, if you want complete control, you got to go with the 10-inch canister style. Otherwise, go with the new kind. They are so easy. I installed one for my mom. It takes less than a minute to replace all four cartridges. Um, even the RO cartridge just snaps right in. No mess, no worry. I, I highly recommend the new plug-in cartridge style. Um, I'll put links in the description below. When it comes to the canister styles, uh, stage one is always going to be the, the finest uh, sediment filter you can get. I use a one micron spun polypropylene filter. Uh, it's going to catch objects or debris or sand or particles or globules of whatever gets into the uh, system. It's going to catch that down to one micron. And, and the spun polypropylene, they hold a lot of debris. You replace that about every three to four months, depending on how dirty your water is. Second stage. Uh, talking, getting back to pharmaceuticals and weird ass chemicals in city water. I'm using activated alumina in a self refillable clear cartridge there. Uh, you can actually get the self refilling cartridge on eBay along with like 15 pound bags of this uh, filter grade activated alumina. Basically activated alumina will take all the fluoride, all the arsenic and probably a lot of those weird uh, abstract pharmaceutical and uh, weird chemicals out of the water. Um, it's uh, kind of like activated carbon in a way, but it, it kind of grabs more onto the weird chemical things. So fluoride and arsenic is going to be stage two. And then stage three, you always want it to be some sort of extruded carbon block filter. I'm using the SCBC10. The S at the beginning stands for silver, and the uh, it's actually impregnated with silver. And uh, if any of you are familiar with uh, colloidal silver, uh, silver is great at killing uh, bacterial infections, killing microbes and bacteria, uh, a lot of undesirable living uh, living stuff that you don't want in your water. Um, the silver ions impregnated into this filter will kill a lot of that stuff. And it also uh, keeps uh, like a biofilm from developing in the canister cartridge and on the filter itself. Uh, that biofilm can actually cause the filter not to work as efficiently because it, it keeps water from getting through the filter. So the silver kills bacteria and uh, prohibits a biofilm from forming. So stage one, car uh, sediment. Stage two, activated alumina. Stage three, extruded carbon filter with silver. That's the way I like to do it. I'm kind of a water geek. I want to know what I'm drinking. And then from there, it goes into the RO membrane up there and into my tank there and then out the little dispenser on the sink. So uh, that's the way it's done. When it comes to installing an RO system in an RV, there's a couple really key uh, considerations you want to address. First would be uh, access. I have kind of a tough time reaching in there and changing out these filters. You, know, you got to use the, the filter wrench, you got to get in there, you got to make sure they're tight and not leaking. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So in my case, um, I really would be better served by one of the plug-in canister type. Uh, but since I like control over my water filtration stages, I went with this. Um, second consideration, and this is probably the most important thing, um, the drainage. 
any any solids or any chemicals or debris that can't be filtered or absorbed through the membrane and the RO filter there gets uh, comes out the drain line. And what most people are going to do is what I did at first and just drain that right into the kitchen sink drain line. And that's going to go straight into your black water holding tank. Um, within one year in Arizona where we have hard water, I had a buildup like that in the bottom of my gray water tank. And the blade valve for the kitchen gray water tank just stopped working. I got so clogged up with lime and calcium and solids that were filtered out by the RO membrane and got drained down into this drain line that uh, it plugged up my whole kitchen system. So I had to take everything apart, flush everything really good. And now what I do is I drain it out where the the black and gray water exit the trailer. You can either come right before your last blade valve, so it just drains right there, but I just went straight to where uh, both of the lines come in and uh, they go out to the, the sewage drain for the RV. Um, I figure I'm not gonna be using the RO system while I'm moving, and it's only gonna be filtering while I'm hooked up to water, and I just let that stuff drain right out. Um, so there's two ways you can do it. Just drain it to your last blade valve and let it accumulate there or uh, go straight out the, the sewer line with it. But under no circumstance, just let it drain down into your gray water tank, um, especially if you're in a hard water area. Uh, my whole system clogged up in under a year because of that. So that's pretty much it. As long as you drain that somewhere way down the line, you'll be good. You won't uh, clog up your system. You want to use a, a good three-stage system, either a canister type or uh, one of the plug-in cartridge time. Uh, I'll put links to all that in the description below. But thanks for watching and make sure you check out our other great videos. I'm going to be doing an RO backflush uh, system here uh, shortly. I'll put up a video of that as well. Thanks for watching.